Two PC stream setups. If you're a growing streamer or a streamer looking to up your game, it's definitely something that you've heard of. Now, if you're on a budget or you're looking for a solution with limited space or something like that, doing two PCs in one case is something that's a little bit different. Today, we're gonna check that out. Let me show you how I built it on a budget and how it all works. Hey everyone, if you're new around here, my name is Chris and today I'm going to be your stream technician. We're going to be talking about how to build two computers in one case using this Fantex and through Lux case that Fantex was kind enough to send out. They also included their power supply, their one power supply that can power two computers. It's the Revolt 1000 watt, super nice power supply. So before we get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button, click that thumbs up button and uh, well, let's get to it. So as I mentioned, Fantex sent this case out. It's the Enthu Lux 2. It's using a Revolt 1000 power supply, also one of their products. But what's really nice about that power supply is it's actually made by Seasonic. So one of the best power supply brands out there is, you know, it's the OEM for this thing. So that's actually really good. So let's talk about the specs though, because when it comes to streaming setups, specs is a really big deal, but most of the time it's more cores, the better. I had some spare parts lying around that I threw together into this thing. So it's not the prettiest of builds, neither it is the highest spec of builds. And if you guys wanted to check out a dual PC, you know, dual system one case build like this, but that's decked out or looks way better than this one, make sure to check out JD Tech Gear's video. That'll be linked down below. And also Bitwit Kyle's, because he did one recently that's very similar to what we're gonna be covering here today. However, we're approaching this thing from a sort of budget perspective. So let me get into the breakdown of the specs of both the systems in, in this beast, and then we'll get into showing you how it all works. System one is the top system in the case. It's my test bench. This is what I use to test and benchmark and do all sorts of stuff. That is using an HP Z420 motherboard with an, a Xeon E5-1620, that's the Sandy Bridge version, V1. That's a four core, eight thread CPU, essentially equivalent to an i7-2700. That's not necessarily anything new or high performance or anything like that. It's got 64 gigs of RAM, which is a lot. Realistically, you only really need like eight or 16, let's say 16, but it's server RAM, got it on eBay. It was very cheap. This little platform supports that, but that's neither here nor there. Aim for 16, then you'd be good to go. Um, and the graphics card is an NVIDIA GTX 1060 six gig. Again, nothing fancy or high end. The cooler on it is actually one of the Scythe coolers that we recently reviewed, and that'll be linked right over here and down in the description if you wanted to check that out. However, this platform does not support overclocking, so you could realistically get away with any regular cooler, and uh, you know, that helps bring the cost down. System two is actually something that we've covered in the past, but is actually something that we definitely need to revisit because the old video that we did on it is not very good. So it is an i7 3610QM, that's a laptop CPU, and a Portwell Wade 8321LU motherboard. That's a, a mini ITX motherboard that can take a locketed, locketed, socketed laptop CPU like this i7 3610QM, which is actually super cool because it's a four core, eight thread CPU. That is still a pretty decent CPU. It's Ivy Bridge. So none of this stuff is anything too far away from itself, like Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge. And you can say that an Ivy Bridge laptop CPU is roughly on par with performance of a you know, similar equivalent uh, Sandy Bridge uh, i7 or quad core, whatever. The graphics card that we paired with that system is an RX 560. This is just a regular old RX 560. We did a video on it. Make sure you check it out. Linked up here or down in the description below. Does decently in gaming, but realistically, I use it to throw on the test bench and to just have available for systems that uh, don't need an external, you know, PC, PCIe power to power it. It's just a nice, you know, good GPU to have around. And in this case, it's going to help run the OBS preview window because OBS does need a little bit of GPU resources, and this is definitely enough to handle that. Now, it's vertically mounted in the case, which looks great, to be honest, but Fantex doesn't include the riser cable. So if you're gonna be doing vertical mounting with this case, even it has the supports and everything for it, but it just doesn't include the riser cable. That's something that you'd have to purchase separately. That'll be linked down in the description below if you wanna check out this one or any other vertical uh, cables that you might be after. Can't forget the RAM on this second system. It's only using four gigs. That's it, only four gigs of RAM. All this second system doing is doing is encoding. So it doesn't necessarily need to be crazy high end in terms of graphics card 
or RAM. It realistically only needs a really strong CPU and a decent graphics card. So if you happen to have two PCs, two decent PCs that are just taking up a lot of space or you just need to consolidate space, this is something that's definitely attainable for you guys and maybe something to look into. If you've seen our two PC NDI tutorial video, the goal there in that video is if you have a spare computer or a decent second computer, that that would be your streaming system. And we're basically going with that here. No elaborate or high end or fancy parts are being used in this system. This is something that anyone can really do. Something to talk about this case is just the quality of it. It is kind of a, you know, plasticky on the outside, but you get a really nice tempered glass side panel. I love that it's swing out. And also the fact, you don't see this in a lot of cases with tempered glass side panels, but I guess at this price point, it's sort of a, sort of a must have, is uh, yeah, like you get this ceiling foam here that it really does make a difference in the noise. So if you have everything nice and sealed up with something like this, you don't have as many air gaps. It also probably helps direct airflow. And yeah, speaking of airflow, this thing can take so many fans. I think it could take four in the front, four 120s in the front, three or four 120s in the top, and a 120 or 140 in the rear. Yeah, you can get some major airflow or custom water cooling in this one. It even looks like you can do 120 in the bottom here, in this slot down here. And they can take a bunch of drives with any additional trays here in this section. And yeah, this case has a lot of room, super easy to work in. Nice, you know, materials that it's made out of where it's, you know, where it's metal and such. And uh, it's really easy to just to take apart and do your thing. It, it also has a fan hub integrated in the back. And on the back as well, there's like a clear panel to see your SSDs. Real nice overall. Can't forget something that actually dresses up the build a little bit. Easy DIY sent over their dual ring RGB fans. We've used this in the past as well with one of our previous systems, the $600 build, and also the RGBs 2.0, which, uh, which the same motherboard was using as well. So it's actually like really nice how they're just finding their way into more of our builds. But they're actually nice. They come with the PWM. They're all PWM, by the way, and they're addressable 5 volt RGB, and it comes with its own hub. And it's not some proprietary hub, which I think is really cool. It's four port PW or four, yeah, four pin PWM and the three pin 5 volt RGB, the standard stuff, which is actually really nice. The sleeved extensions that you're seeing in this build are also made by Easy DIY. Those will be linked down in the description below. They look great. But yeah, let's get streaming. For the next part, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to get the stream, the, what you're doing from one computer to the other. And uh, again, I'm gonna talk about our 2PC NDI tutorial video that'll be linked right up here and down in the description below. That's what I'm gonna be doing with this one. I'm gonna have both of these computers talking to each other over the network because it's simple and it's fast and it's free and that makes it cheap. So at this point, you're probably asking yourself, how am I running two PCs with two monitors, one keyboard and one mouse and being able to go between back and, you know, back and forth between them? Well, that's what I'm about to show you with the program called ShareMouse. So as you can see here, I have the computers labeled which one's which. So this is computer one. That's the primary computer is what we're going to be gaming on. This is computer two. And again, this is the second one. This is going to be doing all the encoding for the streaming. And yeah, again, like, you know, one keyboard, one mouse, share mouse is a free program. I believe they do offer like paid upgrades for additional features, but the free version gets you a keyboard and mouse usage across both works over the network. It's actually kind of neat. So right now I'm over here on computer one and I can just mouse on over to computer two as if it was just a second screen on a two screen setup on one computer. That's just how it feels. And even the, the keyboard transfers over obviously. So I can like, I'm hitting the keyboard now I'm over here. Right, and then I'm gonna move the mouse back to computer one. And there goes the keyboard again, just working like that. It's flawless, honestly. This is actually, it makes this so useful and so easy to do if you have two computers and you wanna minimize having a bunch of setup all over the place. You're not gonna to need to reach over to grab another keyboard or mouse or have it all near you in front of you, making everything messy. You just have a nice simple setup and there you go. So now it's time to go over all the stream setup, all the setup between the two computers here. You can see computer one is here and computer two is here. Um, I s configured all my overlays and everything on this system using OBS NDI. We do have a, a pretty popular video on that. So if you guys want to check that out, it'll be linked down below. And uh, yeah, I previously mentioned that as well. So as you can see, I already, I already went through, added my webcam, which is the Avermedia PW313. 
as well as this uh, starting screen. So these are Stream Elements overlays. They're free, they're real neat, and uh, very customizable. We have a whole video on the tutorial, basically, of, have, of how to import these, how to use them, how to customize them. And again, that'll be linked down in the description below. It's a very good video and it covers everything you'd want to know regarding the Stream Elements overlays configuration with OBS Studio. Anyways, let's keep going. So the thing is when you have OBS NDI and here we are on the gaming computer, you only need to worry about in the settings under video, the, uh, the output that's going to come out here. So we're going to stream 720p 60 and I already did output scaled resolution 720p and FPS of 60. And then once that's done, you go over to the NDI output settings and make sure main output is checked. And I called it main PC. And then from here, we go over to computer two and we bring up OBS. And as you can see, I'm already here. And I, anything that I'm doing over here on, uh, on this computer, and uh, let's see here, it reflects over there. Like the webcam is on computer one, but you're seeing it on computer two. That's the beauty of NDI. Everything that is being seen in the preview window in OBS on one PC is reflected onto the other PC. So we're over here. This is where you want to configure all your stream setup. But first, like real quick, the NDI setup that you see, I'll just show you real fast. It's plus add a source, NDI source. We're going to call it main PC. And you see it here on the drop down list desktop, blah, 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 main PC. Everything else can basically stay like this as default. And uh, I'm going to make an adjustment to the latency mode just to check that out. And then press OK. And if everything's good, there we are. Just like that, we have the entire feed from the, one, the first PC coming to the second PC. And if you were wondering, how do you hear all your alerts and everything? Those are in the stream elements overlays that are coming in the main PC. So you'll be hearing it as desktop audio in your main headset on your main computer. And so now on the streaming computer, computer two, this is where you configure your streaming, um, your output, map, your bit rate and CPU preset and all that stuff. So we're gonna go down to settings. We're gonna open up output and we're gonna click advanced under here. So advanced, um, rescale output, make sure that's unchecked. 6,000 k, k, you know, kilobit per second bit rate as long as you have enough bit rate to sustain that. That's Twitch's limit if you're not a partner. Um, leave use custom buffer size unchecked, keyframe intervals too. I'm gonna go with faster as the preset for this CPU. It's four core, eight thread, faster should be doable. And then it's always just a matter of figuring it out from here to see how much load goes onto there. Obviously, you're going to want to go slower to make it look better, but we're just leaving it for faster for now. And then I'm going to go down to video. And again, I mentioned we're going to be streaming 720p 60. So 1280 by 720 is what I configured to be being sent from the gaming PC. And what I'm going to be streaming out to Twitch right here, 1280 by 720. I'm going to pick, pick Laxos as a dance downscale filter. The, you know, it's going to be the best that you can get there. And then common FPS value of 60, 720p 60 stream. It's going to look fantastic. And uh, of before all this, though, make sure that you're over here in your stream that you've linked your Twitch account. You've put your URL in there, rather your Twitch stream key in here, or you just associate your account through OBS. And uh, once all that is configured, uh, you're ready to stream. Who is you? So let's see, FPS, perform FPS performance right now running around outside is, we're getting over 90, but uh, we'll see where it really boils. Oh, this is a snow map. <laughs> it's even worse than this map. It's time to go get moited our vests. Oh, this is bad. This is not, oh wait, a shotgun. I love me some shotguns. All right, well, let's see what happens next. Oh yeah, there's somebody up there. Boom, baby! Come on, loot, Just get looting. Boom! <laughs> get them clips if you can with Shooting Dragon. Appreciate it. Oh, now somebody else is shooting at him. Ah, oh, that umpy got me. I didn't have not my didn't have my right mouse and keyboard set up. I would have got that, but 
Hey, a couple of shotgun kills, not bad. Oh yeah. Good landing, right by the door. Running through the grass. It's not gonna look that great on stream. <laughs> but grass and PUBG always gives streams the, the most fits. Oh, oh. Somebody else found him. Yo! Oh. <laughs> Shoot. And there you have it. That's two PCs streaming in one case with full control going between both via share mouse. It's really effective. It's actually pretty awesome. I didn't really talk too much about the cost of the parts that are being used in this, but uh, we'll throw it up on screen right now. I mean, the E5, the Xeon E5-1620, I got it for around 40-ish dollars back in the day. It's probably cheaper now. An HP Z420 or Z620 motherboard is, again, I think I got mine for 50 or 60 dollars. So that's still pretty good. And these will take registered server RAM, which is super cheap on eBay, as you can probably see right now in the B-roll. The other parts, a mini ITX, four core, eight thread, anything will do just what we just did right here. It doesn't have to be my setup here with a laptop CPU in a weird motherboard or anything like that. Whatever you think is cheapest, as long as you got four cores and eight threads on the streaming computer, and it will fit in this case, will get this done just as good as anything else. And can't forget, special thanks to Fantex for sending out the case and power supply. If you guys wanted to check these out, it'll be linked in the description below. If in a setup like this where I'm talking about budget and all that stuff, these end up being the most expensive parts of the build, but the simplicity and setup that you get, uh, that sort of has a lot of value when it comes to that. And uh, the case itself is about 189 and the power supply is like $230. So you're getting a lot for that. It does cost a bit much, but uh, you know, it is what it is. You get a cool looking, you know, cool setup with two PCs and that's really nice. Also special thanks to Easy DIY Fab for sending out the fans and the extensions for the power supply as well. So if you guys had any questions, make sure you leave a comment down below. And uh, there's a lot involved in this setup. It's pretty simple once you actually get a look at it, but there's a lot to do to make sure everything's up and running the way that you want. All tutorials talked about will be linked in the description below to do all this. And if you have any questions, again, drop a comment down below and uh, we can talk about that and I can help out as much as I can. We also can answer all sorts of questions over in our Discord. Again, everything's linked down below. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, hit that like button and that subscribe button. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. So how would you guys go about doing two PCs in one case? What would you build? What parts would you select? Drop a comment down below. Let's talk about it. Bye. <laughs> Clip. Too much?